Seemingly the biggest fan of the Fallout television show is still limping his way through each and every episode. Today's review will be all about episode number five, What a Difference a Day Makes. Who am I? I'm a Fallout super fan. I've played all the games. I am very well versed on all the lore and knowledge, and this has been an absolute treat to cover episode by episode. I know a lot of other people who review the Fallout series have done one single episode collectively. I like to take my time and break down each and every piece of the episodes, things that I found interesting, talk a little bit about some of the Easter eggs, like the oh my god type moments, and uh, we'll just keep going along. We're, we're almost to the end, guys. I know a lot of people have already laughed at me and are talking about the next season, but I'm still chugging along, so thanks for sticking with me. Um, <clears throat> this episode picks up with uh, Lucy and Maximus finally meeting up. So uh, one of the big kind of overarching things in this whole series has been Lucy's, we're seeing a lot of the world through Lucy's eyes, right? She is bright, shiny, new, smiley, a handshake still means something, right? Um, as we've realized, you know, time and time and time again, she continues to get put down, pushed away, attacked, and she still keeps kind of putting, you know, her happy face forward. And I feel like this episode might have finally been the breaking point episode for her where she realizes that she's going to have to just kind of grow up and that the world outside the vault is not uh, as peaceful as she thought it might have been and that most people aren't good. I say that, of course, with the huge uh, caveat that Maximus seems to be a great friend of hers and they think I think they're going to do great things together. Um, both of them are in a bad place. Lucy is really heavily radiated, having spent a lot of time with the ghoul drinking radiated water, and she needs help badly. Um, Maximus, um, feeling a little high on the hog, reveals to his squire uh, Thaddeus that he is in fact the notorious paladin Titus, and that, oh by the way, um, he kind of sort of died and I've been pretending to be him. Well, um, Thaddeus doesn't like this, and removes the uh, power core out of the back of the T-60 power armor, trapping Maximus in there, which seems like a horrible design choice. Um, in all the Fallout games, you can walk up behind the power core and pull it in or take it out, um, and the suit will usually open up so that you can you know, get in or out. Uh, the fact that um, you're trapped in this universe seems like a massive design flaw for these super soldiers. It does explain why you would need to have a squire running behind you. In theory, if your power core ran out during battle, they could just run up behind you and rip one out and plug one in while they're doing all the other tubes, like the feeding tubes and the bathroom tubes and everything behind you. But kind of interesting design choice. Well, Maximus gets stuck in there, basically left to die. And of course, because serendipity is the name of the game, Lucy rolls up to him and they form a somewhat uneasy alliance. But I think by the end of the episode, it's pretty clear that they're going to be bros. I think that makes sense. For the show, it would make sense for them to stop having this kind of animosity towards each other and just get along. Maximus provides Lucy with some of the notorious rad away, not Rad X. We'll talk about that in the Easter egg section at the end. Uh, and Lucy um, gets him out of the suit. So it's kind of a win-win. Uh, they decide to run off and pursue the head. Recall that Lucy still has the tracker inside of the nostril. And even though Thaddeus has the head and he's going to basically walk back to the Brotherhood of Steel headquarters and be like, hey guys, I found the head. And by the way, uh, Maximus is a scumbag. Uh, Lucy and Maximus are hot on his trail. So uh, we don't actually see them catch up. What ends up happening, as with all great Fallout um, shows, uh, we have a little bit of a, a throwdown with some randos on a bridge. Uh, during this, Lucy again puts her best foot forward. Um, hijinks ensue. Uh, but thankfully, thanks to Maximus's military training and quick thinking, he does actually save the day. And he kills both of these cannibals. Lucy's like, wow, they actually eat people? Yes, Lucy, they do. Um, <laughs> just like you saw your good friend the ghoul make some ass meat <laughs> last episode. Um, the, uh, so they go out, they, they kill these cannibals, and then they fall into a trap, which I'm not really sure why a vault would go out of their way to create this, but they created this kind of trap room. 
and they fall into a vault. And the episode ends with them looking through the window, Lucy saying, hey, I'm home, hey, we're safe. Uh, we'll have to see where that pans out. We know there's other vaults out there, by the way. Um, all the Fallout games are littered with them. They're great places to explore and find loot and some really weird, twisted social experiments. I have a feeling Lucy is probably going to realize, just as we are realizing with Norm and Chet, that all the vaults are not what they seem to be. Norm and Chet, on the other hand, as I said, they realize something's going on with Vault 31. Um, they get to the Vault 31 door, and there's a sign written in blood that says, we know what's in there. Um, so between 32 and 31, something's not right. Recall in this configuration of the vault, there's actually three vaults in a triangle. They all kind of work together. One vault is supposed to be better at producing uh, better crops, and one is supposed to have better leaders, as we find. Um, we're not really sure what 32's contribution is yet. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that uh, Vault 32 um, might be the meat factory. <laughs> um, when things look glum, vote for 31 is the tagline. We see an election in this episode. Uh, Betty wins and Norm and Chet continue to find weird things like all the leaders for every vault, every overseer ever has been from Vault 31. Vault 32, which was basically, you know, raider food. Everybody was killed and just, you know, totally destroyed um, overnight through Betty's hard work and probably with some support from 31, which again, we'll find more about them, uh, brings the vault to a shiny, fresh new state. And it's determined that they're going to start to repopulate that. So they're actually going to split away from the original core group of vault dwellers we've seen. Some are going to go to Vault 32. Some are going to stay at Vault 33 and start to repopulate and build up those communities again. So um, has this happened before? It sure seems like it. That's why I said I think their contribution might be the meat grinder part of it. But overall, it's a really good episode. It's definitely a lot slower than some of the other episodes, I think, in terms of some of the action. That said, they're doing some phenomenal storytelling and, and setting up some big conspiracy beats. In an episode, you know, in, an, in a game of Fallout, working your way through a conspiracy in a vault takes you maybe an hour, an hour and a half to walk through and hack into all the computers and take in all the environmental ambience to kind of figure out what's going on. And Bethesda has always been the king of telling stories solely through environmental storytelling, right? Where you can walk through and realize quickly what happened. Experiment went wry here, or um, this doesn't seem right. All the, you know, all the, all the victims have, uh, they're all looking in this direction. So they all got stabbed in the bat, whatever it happens to be. Bethesda has always done a phenomenal job of telling those um, kind of mysteries. Now, it's slightly different to television forum. We have to let Chet and Norm kind of slowly figure it out, but they are definitely pulling away at something. And I'm hopeful in the next episode or two, we get a really nice payoff to kind of understand a little bit more what's going on. Uh, this was a great episode, though. I loved it. Uh, as with every episode review, I'm going to end with some of the fun little Easter eggs and spoilers and kind of tiebacks to the video game because as I'm watching this, I can't help but can't help myself. Um, we see uh, Maximus inject Lucy with a bag of Rad Away, uh, not to be mistaken with Rad X. So Rad Away will actually cure you of radiation. Um, you take it and it just instantly lowers your radiation level. Rad X makes you more um, immune to the effects of radiation. Your radiation doesn't build up as fast when you're in more radiated zones, um, which is interesting because we haven't seen any Rad X. You would think that if Lucy was going out into the unknown, she probably would have some with her because you don't want to get radiated, so you're trying to prevent that as much as possible. So maybe a little poor planning on the vault goers' parts, not realizing just how bad the world is out there, but um, you're probably going to want to take some with you. And typically in the Fallout games, the loot is skewed more towards Rad X than Rad Away because the idea is you're constantly taking it, and it's kind of like a meter you're constantly balancing to make sure you're not going too radiated too quickly. Um, we meet the Fiends. Now, in this world... The fiends are actually a, a name that was given to the cannibals. Um, in the traditional Fallout games, and Fallout New Vegas specifically, the fiends were actually a gang uh, who was obsessed with taking chemicals and meds, um, much like the ghoul. So they weren't actually cannibals in this one. Uh, but it's it's a nice nod. I love when they, and they throw in names of stuff related to the game. 
Um, it didn't take away at all from the Fiends gang. They were definitely a minor gang in Fallout New Vegas. They were definitely like a B-tier story that you dealt with when you got to the Strip. But ultimately, um, they did exist. So I thought that was a fun little nod to no doubt Fallout New Vegas. Uh, speaking of New Vegas, uh, we also get to see a sign for the NCR, the New California Republic, which is a predominant faction in Fallout New Vegas um, and the remnants of Shady Sands. Now, in this iteration of Shady Sands, it, it was the original headquarters of the NCR, which has been destroyed. Um, much like in the other Fallout games, you do hear just, the, I believe every single Fallout game, um, even three, they make a very ancillary term to what they call the Shady Shady Shan, Shady Shans Shuffle. Um, it is mentioned a lot, and it was kind of the idea of this like city that like made it. Like it defied all odds. Like, you know, the world ended, but somehow people got back together, got back on their feet, and it didn't work out. And that was a major moment for Lucy in the show, realizing that kind of the original, you know, her idea of Reclamation Day, of opening the vault doors and having all these shiny, fresh new vault dwellers going out and repopulating the world already was already attempted and failed. We also find that Maximus is actually a resident of Shady Sands through a lot of the different flashbacks. I thought that was really cool. And I'll, I'll briefly mention, I know there was some controversy on the timeline of when the Shady, ba Shady Sands bomb fell, but I promise you, um, there's no shenanigans here. It all makes sense. Logically, this show does fall within the existing universe, the other games we've played. And um, I believe Todd Howard and Bethesda are definitely on top of their lore game because they've always been. So I, I don't think there's any shenanigans here. Um, lastly, speaking of cannibalism, cannibalism is actually a perk in Fallout 4. Um, and if you become a cannibal, everybody hates you for it. All your uh, followers think you're gross. It's disgusting. If you do it enough, you get this perk called the dark craving. And the dark craving means no food has any impact on you. You have to eat human flesh. So if you want to go down that road, you can, but it's going to cost you probably a lot of good boy points and everybody's going to look at you like you're a freak. All right, that wraps up my review of episode number five. I'll be back again. There's only three episodes left for me at least. Uh, expect a review from me later in the week on episode number six. I can't wait to get into it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.